All right. So, Dan, it's wonderful to meet you. My name is Michael from NWA 3D, and we're going to talk about your printers and kind of finish up everything that we need to for you to make sure that you're printing and ready to go for the rest of the school year. So, okay. Um, first off, we're going to do the four steps to printing, and the first one is going to be the creation or design process. Okay. I revolve around that idea that you need to make something or your students need to make something. So there's a ton of online files out there, which are great and really cool a lot of the time, but you don't really quite get as much fulfillment out of just pulling those off the internet because downloading something is super easy and this is just like a regular printer and just prints in three dimensions. Okay. You know, if you're printing off a picture from Google and it's of a beautiful landscape and you print it off and you're like, I took this picture with my camera, everyone's going to be like, no, you didn't. Okay. But, and that's the same thing that happens on these printers. If you do that and you kind of showcase it as you did this yourself, you didn't make it, you just printed it. Yeah. That's kind of like how I like to phrase that to students because they go, okay, I get that. You know, it's a little bit different way of thinking it because you do make it, but really all you're doing is taking it and printing. It. So, okay. We, we emphasize the design process, even though we don't cover it during the training, that's what we emphasize and it's probably the hardest step you're ever going to do, uh, just because there's a lot of information that you can go through in order to make it. Okay. Some of the programs we rec recommend before I move to the next step is going to be like Tinkercad. Have you heard of that one before? No, never heard of that one. Okay. Do you have a specific one in mind that maybe you guys have used? You know, we've been using the uh, Paxton Patterson module, which... Mm -hmm. uh, goes through the UP program, and the kids have been limited on what they can do, either a keychain, a ring, or a sphere, and that's basically all they offered, and that's why we were looking for something more than what okay. they were offering. Sure, so are you teaching high schools? I'm teaching middle school. Middle school, okay. So Tinkercad is a good introduction to computer-aided design, if that's something you're looking for, and it's just exactly as you would think, Tinker CAD. Okay. Com. It's free entirely. It runs on Chromebooks. If you wanted to use it on Chromebooks, it's completely web-based. Okay. And a second one that's similar like that, but has a lot more features, it's more like an actual, you know, industry kind of CAD, design, CAD program, would be OnShape or O-N-S-H-A-P-E. Okay. And that's another good one. That one's entirely free for education as well. Um, my preferred program as a modeler would be Fusion 360. Okay. That is an Autodesk product, so usually you do have to buy license license for those. Um, those can be free for educators as a single license, I believe, and if your students sign up individually, they can sign in anywhere with that account, um, but they need an education email, which they probably have close to middle school, junior high areas, they'll start getting those. So okay. it's something that is feasible for them to use for free. Okay. So those, those three are pretty good. Um, I will link the on shit. I'll link all three of those in our follow-up email so you don't have to worry about trying to hunt them down. Uh, it will be in there, okay? All right, appreciate that. Next, the second step, well, I guess we should talk about what do we want out of that first step. So that first step, we finish all the design, we finish making it, and then we need one file. We need to export it. We want to export the file as an STL. And that's what the abbreviation is at the end. So it's called a .stl. And what STL stands for is Standard Triangle Language. Or basically it takes whatever shape you had modeled in that nice environment and it expresses it in triangles or simplistic shapes. And so those simplistic shapes now make up whatever you had. So this would be made up of triangles is the idea. Everything within here would be triangles. And that's how it expresses it to the computer. And so once we finish, we have that STL file, we're going to put it in something called a 3D slicer. And so what a 3D slicer does is it's going to take this object and it's going to cut it in a whole bunch of layers all the way down the object. Now the reason it does that is because the printer operates in an XY and moves up, right? So it moves in an XY pattern and it'll make whatever it needs, kind of squirt out plastic. And then it'll move up one and it'll do the same thing again, maybe changing the pattern to make another layer. Okay. Each of those layers stacks on top of itself to create that 3D object. So we need to tell the printer how to move. And that's what the slicer is going to do for us. Okay. We basically put that triangle language inside of it, which is basically, you know, Japanese to these Chinese printers. <laughs> and we put it through the slicer and then it converts it to Chinese. So that's what we're going to go through. Okay. 
So we can go ahead. You you said you downloaded Cura. What version did you have? Um, it is the 15.04.6. That is too perfect. All right. So have you already installed it? Yeah, it's installed. Okay. So whenever you run it for the first time, it should pop up this add new machine wizard. Is this true? Yeah, I went through the uh, manual you guys sent with the, the flash drive. Yeah. And I went and went through and set it all up. Basically. Wow. That is absolutely fantastic. Well, let's talk about it. And I'll, I'll set up a new one real quick so you can watch me as I go through this just to make sure that you feel comfortable that you did everything right. And then we'll talk a little bit about the settings and what those do when you change them. So you already changed all of these values here on the left-hand side? Yeah. And in the machine? Uh, I haven't done anything in the machine because I wasn't sure how to do that. Absolutely. So let's cover that right now then. So in the top left-hand corner, you can click on machine in the toolbar and then click machine settings. Okay. Okay. It's going to pull up this same dialog box and this dialog box is where we can change all of our, you know, how big our build area is. And so we want to set that blue area that's on top of the printer that has the little uh, nice NWA 3D logo. We want to okay. set that to the same size. So we wouldn't want to change maximum width to 125. Okay. And then the depth will be 150. Okay. And finally, the height will be 100. Okay. Perfect. And then we yep. need to unclick the heated bed. Okay. So this option right here. And then we should be good. Okay. So do you have any other 3D printers? Um, we had that up printer, but uh, I got three printers in the group with okay. this. Okay, cool. So yeah, these are all going to be the same. You can slice them from the same computer using the same files and same settings. Okay. It, it works universally across. So you can change the machine name if you would like to, otherwise you can go ahead and hit okay. Okay. And next is all of these settings over here on the left side. So you have most of them correct. I'm just gonna step through them a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna tell you what most of them do because these are values that you will usually change if you want your object to look different next time you print. Okay. Whether you want it to look prettier, whether you want it to be coarse or more durable or something like that, this is where that's achieved. Okay. Okay. Now, quick question for you. Yes, when sir. I'm looking at your screen and looking at my screen. So, like layer height, we have the same, but my shell thickness says 0.8. Yes. And so that's exactly what we're about to talk about. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to change in this instance is I'm actually going to change the nozzle size. Okay because this is a piece of hardware that's on the printer itself. So that's not gonna change, it's gonna be 0 0.4. Okay. Okay, there's no changing that unless you actually take the nozzle off, right? So you'll notice that the shell thickness went yellow on my screen. Uh -huh. So the reason for that is because the nozzle size is 0.4 millimeters, so each time the nozzle passes over an area, it puts down 0.4 milliliters of plastic, right? Well, how does, if it passes twice, can it ever put down only one milliliter? Yeah. One centimeter? So it, it, it can't, it's gonna put down 0.8, because if it passes two times, it's gonna put down 0.4 each time, and then it'll have 0.8, right? Okay. Good morning, guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that shell thickness to 0 0.8. And so what shell thickness determines is how thick the outer walls are. Okay. That's the case that if you had, you know, if you want a thicker wall than this one, we would round up to 1.2 and 1.6 and so on. So we want multiple of our nozzle size to make sure that that's working. Now the layer height, you had mentioned a little bit earlier, that's the biggest determinant of how nice your print's going to look. Is it going to look really smooth or is it going to look coarse? So 0 0.3 is going to be coarse and say about 0 0.1 is going to be very fine and detailed. Well, you can range in those kind of values. You can even use decimal points. You can, you know, you can go to 0 0.25 or 0 0.15, whatever you would kind of like to do. Um, and so I like to leave it at 0 0.2. I print almost everything there. It's a good okay. medium quality that I like. Okay. Next, we have a retraction. You'll notice the little kind of checkbox there. All retraction does is it pulls back filament when it's moving from spot to spot. Okay. So that it doesn't drool everywhere, essentially. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bottom and top thickness is going to be the exact same thing as that shell thickness. Okay. To determine how thick are my bottom and top of the model. Now, if you think how the 3D printer is going to print it, this value doesn't have to be a multiple of four. Okay. It's basically going to take the nozzle and it's going to go over it many, 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 many times in order to create a single bottom layer, right? Okay. Instead of once around to make a wall. Right. So we can change that to 0 0.8. I like it being the same as my wall so that everything's kind of the same thickness around. Okay. Next, we're going to have fill density, and this determines how much plastic supports those walls and the top and bottom. Okay. Basically, it's kind of like your lattice structure inside of it in order to kind of keep everything together. Okay. We'll look, take a look at that when we load a model in, and I'll show you what changing that value does. So next we have print speed, and print speed should be at 50. Okay. This is the fastest you're going to want to print with these printers without sacrificing maybe quality. Okay. You could ramp it up to about 60, but you might start seeing kind of problems with your prints or defects is what we like to call them. So you can always go lower. So if you wanted to go to say 35 or 25, it will make your print look a little bit nicer, um, but it's gonna take considerably longer to create it. Okay. Next we're gonna have printing temperature and this should be 220 degrees. That's just our preferred temperature for this PLA. Okay. PLA is a polylactic acid and it's biodegradable and made from cornstarch. So. It's a good plastic. It doesn't create any harmful fumes. It actually kind of smells like syrup and pancakes when you're printing. <laughs> oh, great. Kids will be eating it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They'll be over there like whiffing it. It'll be all right. So next we're going to have support types. <laughs> and the supports are what really help a model be printed. So if you have an area that's floating in midair, we know we can't print plastic in midair. It's just going to straight and be funny, right? So that's what supports are doing. They're creating a raft or a support structure underneath it in order to get up to that point, right? So as in teacher lingo, that would definitely be scaffolding method. Okay? Okay. We're going to scaffold up to there so that it can actually be built. And that's exactly what they do. Okay. So we're gonna change that to everywhere in this instance, just to make sure that any model we do put in has the supports required. Okay. Now you can change this value depending upon, you know, if you have a flat keychain, you probably don't need supports. Um, the sphere will need supports, um, kind of the models you guys already printed. I'm trying to kind of relate it to you. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Platform adhesion type is exactly what it says. It adheres to the platform. So if you're ever needing one of these options, a brim adds a basically suction cup effect around the object and you would use this in a low surface area condition. So if you have something that has a, like you're trying to print a pin standing up, which is going to be the best way to look at it then it's gonna need some surface area in order to stay on there. Because okay. it's tall and long, but doesn't have much area to sit on, so it's gonna knock itself over if the printer's moving too quick. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna leave that on none for now. We shouldn't need that for any of the models. And we're gonna change one last value, and that's going to be the filament diameter. Okay. We're gonna change this to 1.75. Okay. Now this is true for your plastic. You can actually look at your plastic that's on the side of it with a sticker. Okay. Yep, that's actually on the plastic itself. And so if you're looking to buy more plastic, that would be the type you want. You'd okay. need to go buy 1.75 PLA and whatever kind of color or whatever, you know, everything else doesn't really matter. Okay. All right, so that's all of our settings that we have finished and this will be true always for that computer that you're on as long as you log in. Okay. If a student comes and logs into that, they're not going to have the settings, they're going to have to redo this. Okay. Right. So it's a good instructional point in order to kind of tell them what's going on because a lot of students forget that changing these values are actually going to change how your models print it off. Okay. Kind of just throw it into it and throw it out of it and you know it works, it prints, but you need to remember to sometimes manipulate it in here. Okay, so if I have, let's say, a student logging in, can I just take them through the Cura setup that was sent to me in the, the manual? And then they yes. can set for this? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the manual is a great place to go back to. It has a ton of information, even though I know people don't like reading manuals. I don't yeah. like them. That's just kind of how we are now. You know, 
uh, some this desk came with it, but I didn't read them kind of thing. Right. So, all right. So my mouse is going haywire. All right. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to load a model into this environment so we can kind of manipulate it. So we need that STL file, right? Okay. So I'm going to click here on load. And if you have that USB or if you have an STL, you already want to slice or you would prefer to go ahead and load that. Where'd you go to load at? So it's in the top left hand corner, this little folder icon with the, with the oh, okay. hourglass. Yeah. Okay. And now I've got Anything? the settings. Okay, and so if you have the USB plugged in, there should be a folder inside of that SD card USB uh -huh. that says STL files. Okay. And you should be able to grab one of those. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna plug mine in real quick. And I'll I've got spool holder, keychain, six-sided dice. Yep, so I like the dice. I feel like it's a little bit of a battle model. All right, let's do it. And so I'm gonna click on it and then six-sided dice. There we go, okay. And so if you notice, it turns yellow and it's put right in the middle of the build area. Okay. So the first time the model is loaded, it's always gonna put it right in the middle. If there's already something in the middle, it'll put it right next to it. Okay. You can put a lot of models inside of this area if you choose to. Now remember, the more models, the more time. Okay? Yeah. That's just how it's gonna work. You, know, you need more plastic across the build area. Okay. So what we're looking at is going to be the build surface and this is directly correlated to our printer. Okay. Uh, when we look at this, this is where the cube's gonna be printed on our printer, and we should keep that in mind. So if I wanted it to be printed in the front corner, I totally can. Okay. It's just up to you. Also, if you notice, I kind of pulled it off so it's not really fitting there, and it's gray now. Uh -huh. If an object is gray, it's most likely outside of your build space, and it's not going to print it. Okay. It's, it's basically telling you here, hey, we can't save this model, there's nothing to do here. Okay. So I'm gonna, if I right click in this instance, I can center it back into the middle of the platform. Okay. Also delete it or multiply it in this screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna right click and say center on platform, put it back in the middle. And then I also have three buttons down here. So if you don't see those buttons, you have to left click on the object and then it'll bring them up. Okay, I've got them. You can click on it and you can rotate it. So the first one is called rotate and it brings up three circles around your object, allowing you to change the orientation. Now it's pretty obvious how this cube is going to be wanted to print, but a lot of things aren't. Yeah. So, you know, if you're printing a airplane, what's the best way to orient an airplane? Um, there's, there really isn't, right? So you kind of have to make a choice on which one takes less supports, which one looks like it might print better with supports. And that's kind of the idea of rotating your orientation. Okay. So we're gonna leave the cube there. It's fine on its head. And then I didn't tell you about the camera controls. If you right click and drag, it's gonna rotate. If you okay. scroll wheel, it's gonna zoom in and out. Okay, that's and cool. If you hold down the shift key and right click, it's gonna pan. Okay. Yeah. And that's all the camera controls for you. Just okay. it, it makes looking at the model a lot easier. Excellent. So next what we have is scale. So we can make objects larger and smaller. And this may be something you come across when students export their files. You might notice that their object is massive. It's okay. well, 3,000 miles across for some reason. So you can shrink that here in this environment. Okay. Or you could make it larger if you wanted to. So if we click on the scale, you'll notice it has a whole bunch of numbers. So the size X, Y, Z is telling you the actual dimensions of the object, and then the scale X, Y, Z is a percentage. So if I change this to 0 0.8, it's 80% of the original size, right? And then of course, if I go up to two, it's gonna be twice the size. Okay. And so this is a proportional scale used through this uniform little lock. And so if you unlock that, obviously you can stretch it and manipulate it how you want. Okay. I'm gonna change that back to one. And then this next one is just flip it 180 degrees over an axis. It just mirrors the object in a way. Okay. okay. So next one I want to look at is a view mode called layers. And so this is actually what the printer is being told. So it's going to see what we're about to see. So if you right click here in the top corner and click view mode and go down to layers, you'll notice it generates a very different view for your cube. 
Now it, cha it changed colors and it looks a little bit weird and you have this kind of odd scroll wheel or scroll bar here on the side, right? Okay. Now if you take that and scroll through your object, you'll notice that it cuts into your entire model. Okay. And if we look at it from the side, you see how we can actually see through it right now? Uh -huh. This is that layer idea that I was talking about. This is what the printer does each time, moves up to the next layer, does it again, moves up, so on, so on, so on. Okay. So it's gonna go through a total of 80 layers in order to print this object right now. So if I increase layer height or decrease layer height to make it look better, it's going to have more layers. And we can see that just by changing this to 0 0.1. Notice that from 80 layers to 158 layers. So that, that would make sense. We basically increased the resolution of this print, right? We made everything really close and nice together. Right. I'm going to change that back to two. Okay. Now shell thickness, if you notice these green walls, oops, sorry. So the red walls are the outside walls. The green are inside. This yellow you see is our infill density. Then the light blue you might see here kind of skirting around or here at the bottom is support material. Okay. Okay. Now these dark blue lines are travel lines, which the print head actually moves around. Okay. That's where the printer is going to move. So if I increase my shelf thickness, watch the green walls in this model, and you'll notice that they get a little bit larger. Oh, yeah. So you notice that there's much more thickness to them, right? Right. And so I doubled the value there. So I'm going to change it back to 0 0.8. And then if I change the fill density, so watch the yellow lattice structure, change it to 30, generates it, and there you go. Okay. So those are gonna be settings that determine like durability and how thick your wall is, and it's much more easier, and, excuse me, that's terrible English, that's <laughs> easier to see in this layer view. Okay. Okay. So now we kind of decided that we were happy with that. I'm gonna reduce the fill density to maybe 10 because uh, I printed a model off in 10% and of course kids like to destroy stuff so they put it under a chair and jumped on the chair and it still didn't break. So I know it's good. Okay. So 10% is more than good for something like this cube because it's a very rigid shape by itself. All right, excellent. So that's all we wanted to see in our model view. Um, one last thing I check at the very end is to make sure that that first layer on this view is actually on the build plate. Okay. So the reason I check that is just to make sure that, you know, it's going to lay down and it's not going to be trying to print in midair. Okay. Perfect. So it's good. So I can go ahead and click up here. I prefer to hit file and save. Okay. So I hit file and save G code. Now that's the second, tab, right? That's our Chinese for our Chinese printers. Okay. G code is the Chinese. So we, we can click save G code and then we can place it right back into our SD card. I'm just going to put it in the main folder of the SD card. And then just click save. Okay. That's it. So that was the whole slicing of our file and we should be good to go with that now. Okay. okay. So we're done with Cura. That's all of Cura. So I'm going to stop my screen share here and okay. come back here. So we finished Cura, and now we're good to go, right? Okay. So now all we need to do is eject our USBs from our computers, and then we can put it into the printer. So that's the third step, right? Okay. So first was that design make. We need an STL. Second is slice to G code or Chinese. And then third is move it to the printer. So okay. And then the small SD card that's in the back of it just pulls out. Okay. SD, very, very tiny. And then that is going to go into the front of our printers. So the yellow screen denotes the front where the button is, or the uh, scroll wheel button. That's going to be the front of our printer. And then we can basically just plug that in directly underneath the button at the base. You should see a small slot. Okay. Trying to get it out here. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. So where again now? Small slot right underneath the button. So I'll swap cameras for most of the time here so that you can see what's going on. So if we're looking at the front of the printer, right? Okay. It's right down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it should click in just like every other kind of SD card feels, you know, it kind of just snaps into place with a little spring. Okay, got it. 
All righty, and then we're good. That's all of step three. That one's easy. Now, the fourth step would obviously be to print, right? right. So we would be completely done if we didn't need to check the printers because they did go through shipping through FedEx. Right. Who knows what happens in FedEx trips, okay? <laughs> so we don't even want to talk about that right now. Um, we're, we're going to check out our printers to make sure they're not completely destroyed, and we want to make sure that all their components are plugged in. Kind of like you said, there might be a mutter unplugged. That's something we'll fix now. Okay. okay. So this is this next topic is going to be troubleshooting, and there's a ton of information. Stop me if you feel like. Okay. okay. Now, the first one that we check on is Cura. Cura is one of the biggest troubleshooting steps you can do. If you feel like your model didn't print out right, maybe it needs supports this time. If it wouldn't stay on the build plate, maybe it needs platform adhesion types this time. Okay. If it's super ugly, maybe you just didn't slice it very well. Okay. You know, any of those issues can come back to the computer. Now, the second one, because we already kind of covered Pura, we know our models are good. The second one is going to be mechanical inspection. So we're going to take a look at the printer real quick. We're going to check out four motors, three limit switches, and two belts. Okay. So we don't have to plug it in or anything at the beginning, but I'll tell you, I'll point out a couple things on this printer so that you know what's going on here. And basically the terminology for the printer itself. So first off, if you notice the arm I kind of grabbing right now, this is our x-axis arm okay. that the extruder assembly, which is this whole tube area, this thing, okay. Okay. so this tube along with this back here, this motor that drives into the tube, all of that is considered our extruder assembly. Okay. So this is where the hot end is, this is where everything gets hot, that's why there's a fan there. And then the motor in the back drives the plastic through to melt it down here. Okay. okay. So next we have our build area, which is going to be this blue surface. And then we're going to have the Y axis underneath that build blue, that build surface. So that's going to be the Y axis belt that I'm talking about. So if you want to kind of touch that, see if it springs back, it should. Yeah, it does. Perfect. And the same thing with the X axis. So we want to check that one too. That's just going to be up here. Okay. Make sure that it's at least a little bit springy, not loose. Yeah. And then we also have, basically this is the front of the printer. This is gonna be our screen and our adjustment to obviously select things. Okay. Now, this is a handle. You can pick up and move these printer quite easily and they're very durable. So don't be too worried about kids handling them. That's what we want, okay? I know that sounds crazy, but that's what we want. Okay. We want them to touch the burners. We want them to get hands on. That's why they have such a simplistic look. They're not in a box for a reason. You know, okay. working on these is great tool skills for these kids. Um, and a lot of them might never get those otherwise. Yeah. So now we're gonna look at the motors. So I'm turning this to the right and we're gonna look at the left side of the printer. So the okay. side of the yellow screen's on. You'll notice inside of here, we have a very small white tag and that's our X limit switch. Okay. Okay. And that's going to tell the, this when to stop going to the left. Right. Okay. You can hear it click and that's going to be zero. So that's okay. zero X. And then if it goes all the way down, you'll notice down here that we have a zero Z. Okay. Base. And then finally our Y limit switch is going to be here in the back. Oops, sorry. Right down here. Okay. Okay. And so those three are very critical. And if you hear it kind of going, dun, 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 it's probably because the limit switch isn't activating. Okay. Which means the motor doesn't know when to stop because it's a big dummy and it, it'll just keep driving it, right? Okay. So that's what's happening in those cases. Now we have our X motor here. Okay. We, you can plug that in. These are pretty easy to pull, unplug. Like I just pulled that out, it's pretty simple, but they're also easy to plug back in. Okay. And then we can move kind of towards the back. And I'm looking at the very back of the printer now. And here we have our E motor, which is called an extruder motor, basically what pushes plastic. And it's part of the extruder assembly like we just talked about. Okay. This is going to be our Z axis. And this is the big spiral that goes up and down that everything rides on pretty much. And that's drove by the motor down at the base. Okay. And then to the left, we have our Y motor. And that should be all four of our motors. So an X, a Y, a Z, and an E. Okay. Excellent. So do you have any questions about the mechanical setup of this printer or anything like that? 
No, just like I said, I have the one that looks like it's unplugged. Perfect. You can plug that back in. By all means. Okay. Just making sure I do it right. Yeah, it'll only go in one way. If you, if you try to put it in the wrong way and you're just hammer hands, then you can bend the pins back. I know some students are hammer hands. I've seen them. <laughs> I've named some buying the just. <laughs> I think this is the one it goes into. It has a little tag on it that says so. Yeah, show it to me. Perfect. Yeah. And so does it say E on the wire itself? Yeah. There you go. That go that's where it goes. Remember, that's the extruder motor right there. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's something bent because it's not going in very easily. Well, it can only go in one direction. So the, the little tabs. Uh -huh. The little tabs will be on top. The silver will go on bottom. Okay. If you see silver, put it on bottom. Well, it's like it's not going in straight. I mean, I get one side to go in, but it looks like. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we can look at the pins on the inside here. So if we kind of just take it loose, you can see all of those pins right here. See, there's mine. It looks like right over here. I don't know if there's a pin up in the corner, but it looks like it might be bent. Hmm. Could you get me a little bit closer? Yeah. I'll break the printer too. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, it does look like something's bent up. Yeah. Sure does. Do you have any way of kind of bending that back down? I've got a little set of pliers here. Absolutely. And you should also have a uh, some some uh, tweezers in that pack somewhere. Yeah, that's what I've got in my hand is a tweezer. Oh yeah, the tweezers will work great and then you can kind of grab that pin and bend it back out and then try and plug the E motor back into it once you have it kind of straightened out. And so another reason we like these printers is because they're easy to work on. Yeah. But Cool models, simple, you know, motors and stuff. And if you guys need a, that motor, we can guide you through replacing it and send you the new one. Not a problem. I'm trying to see if there's, how many pins should there be? Should there be six? Yes. Okay. Well, one pin looks like it's stuck up in where the tab is. Okay. So there should be six, but only four of them are used. Okay. So that two outside and the two very innermost are used. Yeah, it's just, it's keeping me from connecting on the Absolutely. outside. Absolutely, yeah. That was a problem being big, having big hands. <laughs> That's why I was never a mechanic. Yeah, I luckily got the uh, other side of the deal there with super skinny <laughs> hands. Skinny long fingers. Everyone's like, you should play the piano. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right, I got it in. Wonderful. Okay. Perfect. Sweet. Hopefully that'll work out. If it doesn't, you can always submit a support request and we'll ship you a, a motor as, as soon as possible. Okay. It's still acting weird, but you'll notice that because it won't push plastic. So in that case, if the motor's messed up, it's not going to push any plastic out. We'll okay. Look at on the print whenever we first start it. Okay. Mechanical inspection, let's kind of, we're, we're going to touch base on the, the build, excuse me, build plate leveling, because I know you're about to have to leave. We got about 10 minutes for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our printers real quick. Okay. And I'm going to cause this to lower just by pushing down on it. Okay. That it's closer to the build area, so we take less time here. Okay, got my mouth. So I just kind of pushed it down. Yeah, perfect, looks great. Now, I'm going to click on the button that is plugged in, and we can go to Setup, okay. and then click on Auto Home. Okay. And so your printer is going to move, and it's going to move to all of those limit switches. You should be able to hear them kind of go click, click, click. And that's going to be 0x, 0y, or 0z, or our origin point for the printer. Okay. Now, whenever we Auto Home, it locks the motors, so you'll notice inside of Setup, there is a disable motors option. So we want to. 
and then we should be able to move everything around again. Let me disable it. Yep, go ahead and disable motor. So, because we're going to level this blue surface to the nozzle. Okay. Now, I didn't show you the nozzle earlier, but it is the very small component that sticks out right here. Okay. And that's going to be the piece that gets heated and squirts out plastic. Okay. Now, the one other thing to take note of is these adjustment knobs down here at the bottom. You see these springs? Yeah. This is what the bed rides on, so we can squeeze this. We can actually higher and lower the bed just by squeezing on it. Okay. And by adjusting these, we make it either taller or higher. Or okay. Or taller. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually level it based on a piece of paper. Now the reason we do the piece of paper is because it's about 200 microns thick whenever we have it folded. Okay. So grab the piece of paper real quick, like so. We're just we fold it in half or? Yeah, go ahead and fold it in half. Hamburger style works. Okay. I had a student ask me once, why do you say hamburger? Why not horizontal? I'm like, all right. Do you think all of your classmates would understand horizontal? And he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Okay. I like hamburgers anyway. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to put it in between here. Right? And okay. One, there's a adjustment knob inside of this area that mine's kind of sitting at right now. Okay. Can I move my plate by hand now? Yes, you, sh you should be able to move your plate by hand. Okay. And it, it shouldn't be too tough. It should kind of move pretty easily. Okay. And so we're going to put that nozzle that I showed you right above that adjustment knob. So it's going to kind of look something like, something like that. So if you notice that I have my adjustment knob right underneath, and then the nozzle above it. Okay. So you look like you're about in the right spot. Okay, and then we're gonna make it to where it feels like this plastic has a little bit of resistance against it. We're gonna okay. feel a little bit of drag is what we're looking for, which tells us they're right at about the same height, right? Yeah. So mine's loose, what's yours? Mine's not too loose, um, but I mean, it could probably be tightened a little bit. Okay, okay, if that's the way you feel, then trust your gut on this and kind of twist it to the left to make the build plate go up. So the, what I mean by that is if you twist the knob in this direction, okay. it should go up. Okay. So righty tighty is going to lower it, lefty loosey is going to higher it. Okay. okay. So you can kind of, if, you, if you're having trouble, you can pull the build plate out, adjust the knob, and then push it back in to check it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. A lot of students forget to push it back in to check it. <laughs> you know, they, they're going, well, I adjusted it, but I, it, it's still super low. And I'm like, yeah, because you're checking the back there. Yeah. But that's just a kind of getting used to it thing. So once you feel that kind of like it, it's, it's dragging, it's pulling on it, then we should be good on that. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. Remember to move it back to check it. So push your build plate back in. Yeah, and see if you feel a resistance to it. A little bit. A little bit, okay. So maybe make it a little bit closer. I always feel that, you know, it's, it's going to be easier if you have more drag rather than less. Okay. It's going to be easier if you have more rather than less. Oh, that was too tight. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too tight if it's buckling the paper when you're trying to move it. Okay, that's better. All right, so keep that one and keep that idea of how that tight that is. Okay to the next one here on the outside, right? So we're just gonna pull this, we're gonna move it to the outside, and then line it up with the adjustment knob just by looking at the side here. So this one's a lot easier to see. We did the hardest one first. That's just kind of how I work. I like doing the hardest things first, it makes it life easy afterwards. Oh yeah. All right, so mine's a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna twist it to the right to lower it. There we go. I'm happy with that. So a lot of the time you shouldn't need a huge amount of adjustment. Most of the time it's kind of like an eighth of a turn or a quarter of the turn will do it justice. 
I can't even get the paper underneath it. <laughs> yep, so if you're having trouble getting the paper underneath it, remember that the build plate's riding on springs. So you can actually take it and push it down with your fingers. Okay. There you go. Does that help? Yeah. Not too far with the screw the opposite way. Yep, if you screw it all the way to the left, it's going to come popping off. And it did. <laughs> Which is fine. That means you loosened it and made it higher, so you can kind of have an idea about it now. I feel like it's easier to learn from the, that mistake than anything. Do I need to do the back one too? Yep, we're going to do the back one too, so we're going to do that by moving the build plate forward and kind of scoot, scooting that over. So that we can kind of check it one last time. So mine's a little bit tight, so I'm going to turn it to the right about an eighth of a turn. There we go. So I just have a lot of experience with this. You'll get better and better, and so will students as they do this. You can also do this with your eyes, if you have very good eyes. Um, I, I make a very small gap in the nozzle, and then just try and print and see if it works. And if it doesn't, adjust it while it prints is often what I do. Okay. All right, so this is the third topic, right? Leveling the build area. The fourth, because we're about to finish here. Um, so our bed plate should be level. So let's schedule a print. We're gonna have to put our plastic in real quick. So go ahead and move this X axis up. Okay. By, by twisting the knob in the back or kind of lifting on this will work usually too. Now twisting the spiral at the very top. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. We're okay. good. So we're gonna load filament in first so that we can kind of go through the whole process. Okay. Click on the button and go to setup. Okay. Preheat PLA. Okay. And it's going to heat up for this plastic. Notice there's also a preheat soft pull right under it. That heats the plastic to a transition phase so that you can pull it out. Okay. So best way to remove it. Like if you if a print finished and it went off to the side and it cooled off and you need to pull that plastic out because someone wants a pink pony. Okay. You can soft pull, preheat soft pull, and then pull it out, and it's going to be real nice. Okay. Sweet. So now it's heating up. So let's take our filament. We have our spool holders, right? Yep. Like so. Yep. And so we're going to take that crossbar. We're going to put it in the middle of our filament, and then we're going to just lay the filament down on there. Makes a nice surface for it to spin on. Now I'm going to take my shears, whatever in the world happened to them. <laughs> okay, I'm on. All right. I use these these pliers and I'm going to basically shear it off quite literally but I want to shear it off at an angle so I'm going to take it and I'm going to snap it kind of like that to cut this at an angle so that it's easier to feed through okay so now what we're going to do is if we kind of look to the left side of the printer you'll notice that that trigger back on that e-motor you plugged in remember uh-huh it's gonna have a small hole. You should be seeing it right about now. Yeah. It's gonna be right there and that's where the filament goes in. So you squeeze the trigger and push the filament all the way through the tube. So. Okay, which trigger do I squeeze now? Oh, okay. Right here, yep. The one with the spring in the back. Yeah. And then you just push the filament all the way through. It should go through. Okay, so just to the other side of it or keep pushing it? Just keep pushing it all the way until it hits up against the nozzle. Okay. You go through this entire tube, and then it'll get here. So sometimes, yeah, you, you figured it out. In, in order to kind of run it through there, sometimes you got to twist it around and manipulate it. Yeah, I think the angle I cut, if I go back side, it'll feed better. Yeah, and so you can always cut a new angle if you prefer. So it looks like you got it through, is that right? Well, I got it in, but it's not going, it's spinning off onto the side. <laughs> Okay, so try it, try it one more time. It's just kind of like process you have to go through sometimes. Yeah. And if you're having a lot of trouble, I usually cut it in a different direction and that usually helps. Yeah, I think it's what I'm gonna have to do. Yeah. There we go. And then it feeds super easy, right? Right. Yeah, it's amazing how that works. 
it has to go all the way through the tube. And then okay. you'll feel it hit that nozzle. It kind of hits resistance. Well, I want okay. you to take it and I want you to push it through just a little bit more. Okay. And try and squeeze it through. And then take a look at your nozzle once you've done that. Yeah, I pushed as far as I can go. Okay. Now, do you see maybe some plastic out like this? Like some stringy plastic? Uh, not yet. If not, then keep pushing there. Okay. Yep. And so yours, yeah, yours should be tall enough. Is yours off the build area? <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yep, because if the nozzle's touching it, you're probably not going to see it. Yeah. And you no, I was just touching it. Okay. So you can go ahead and move it up a little bit if you want. And it's, I like to hold the X or the X axis and kind of spin the piece in the back. Right, keep coming out. Okay, good. So it might not be the same color that you use because we test these before we send them to you. So it might be a different color. Got a yellow. Okay, but it's all right. It'll purge it out whenever we start. So let's go ahead and click on the button. And we're going to click our print. Okay. So we kind of, we're going to go down to print from SD. And then we're going to choose the six sided dies that we sliced. Well, mine say no SD card. Okay, then click on refresh SD card at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then click on that six sided dice and it'll start for you. Okay. In the files? Yep, in the files. Okay. And then just, oh, so now the first thing it's going to do is it's going to heat up. Okay. It's going to go to the home position or it's going to go zero, zero, zero. Okay. Perfect. It's doing it now. And then it's going to go all the way down and then it'll start printing. Okay. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to watch that very first layer and make sure the plastic is laying down. Okay. If it's not laying down and it, and it, and it seems like the nozzle is more than close enough, then it's too close. If it's starting to string up and starting to kind of look like spaghetti or it's kind of looking funny, it's too far away. Yeah, it's not laying down. Okay, and is it too close or too far? Too far, I think. Okay, it, yeah, if it's kind of stringing the plastic, then go ahead and adjust those knobs underneath while it's moving. You can hot level it, it's what it's called. Okay. Until you kind of make it work. doesn't look like there's anything coming out of it right now. Okay, it might be too close if that's the case. If you don't see anything coming out, then it's too close. Okay, so go a little bit higher with it. So you want to take the build plate lower, right? So you want to twist the knobs to the right. So that, that inside one can be pretty difficult. I know it. Yeah, it's just big hands in a small place here. <laughs> well, you, you have some people to help you if you need them. <laughs> They're my audiovisual class. Do you see any plastic coming out yet? Yeah, it looks like I'm getting a little bit down. Okay, so it might have just been a little bit too close is what it sounds like. Okay. Because if, if you don't see any plastic, but you still see it moving across the build area, then, it, then it's causing back pressure and it's not actually spitting out any plastic. Okay. If you, if you do see plastic, but it's stringy, it's too far away. Okay. All righty. Well, it sounds like you got people waiting for you. Yeah, but uh, if you got that recorded, I can go through it again and Absolutely. Uh, get myself really prepared for it. That sounds great. So I will send you a follow-up email here in the next hour or so, and then you should be able to have that for yourself, okay? All right. Appreciate your help today. No problem, Dan. I hope you have a good rest of your day. All right. You too. Good luck 3D printing, guys. Thanks.